We can't hear you, Dr. Willis. Good evening, everyone. I see everyone coming into the webinar. We are super, super, super excited for tonight. Once again, we are thankful for our partner and sponsor AARP Virginia. This year, the Asala Richmond Cultivate series will focus on the importance of black health and wellness throughout 2022. And it's also the national a solid theme. We are excited to kick off tonight with Vegetation 101, how to shop, prepare, and save on your plant-based journey with our Vegetator in Chief, Don Hilton Williams. But first, we're happy to have Ms. Pat Jones from AARP to give us greetings. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pat Jones Scott, and I am a community ambassador with AARP Virginia State Office, which is located in downtown Richmond, Virginia. We hope that you will enjoy tonight's program, and we encourage you to learn more about the wonderful volunteer opportunities we have here at AARP. We will add several links in the Zoom chat so that you can connect with us at a later time, maybe this evening or later this week. AARP has a wealth of information and resources for you and your entire family. Thank you and I hope that you will enjoy today's session. Thank you so much, Miss Pat. So we are excited to have Don Hilton Williams with us tonight. Miss Don Hilton Williams is a vegan chef and author of the Soulful Vegan Cookbook, Flavor My Plate, Your Tasty Vegan Guide to Health Wealth. Known to many as the Vegicator, Dawn's personal and company mission, mission is to radicalize wellness with vegetation and flavor, and it began in 2007 with the opening of her company, Urban Eats LLC. Dawn has leveraged her degree in political science from Virginia State University and her whole food plant-based certification from E. Cornell to give life to her business. Urban Eats serves as an organic, eco-friendly brand that serves animal that served animal and dairy products. But in early 2017, Dawn made a shift in her company to a 100% plant-based vegan and food justice advocacy company after a family health scare and watching an evidence-based health documentary, which we probably can guess what documentary that was, Dawn. We may have just watched the same one and had the doctor here. Probably did. <laughs> After a series of setbacks, Dawn immersed herself in a test kitchen, clinically centered courses, plant-based conferences, networking, and a mountain of books and evidence-based documentaries. Dawn did the work. Less than a year later, she became convinced that promotion of easy, affordable plant-based products and service solutions championed with health and wealth, animal welfare, and a smaller carbon footprint was the right decision. Urban Eats is committed to vegetation, plant-based education for those most at risk for harm by the effects of our top preventable, treatable, and in most cases, reversible chronic diseases. Dawn leads Eat and Drink in Disrupt Chronic Disease Summits and community-based initiatives, including coaching, demos, cook-alongs, and a myriad of healthy vegan product and service solutions. Dawn Hilton Williams has been a guest at numerous national nutritional conferences, community-based and community-based events. Her recipes and brands have appeared in magazines, newspapers, TVs, and podcasts across the country, including in Beyonce's Foundation Baygood and also by last month's guest speaker, Dr. Milton Mills. We are so, so, so excited to have you with us this evening. Dr. Mills gave us so much information about the impact of plants and meat on our bodies. And so we are now ready to hear how we can transition to a plant-based diet in our kitchens. 
So while Dawn is sharing her screen, if you would just put where you are from in the chat. And please, as we are in the presentation, if you have any questions, please put them in the question and answer. I, I have five questions already, but I'm, go I'm going to <laughs> wait. I'm going to wait. Over to you, Dawn. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful introduction. I, 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 I'm hoping I can live up to all that. Um, do you all see my screen here? Let me get that going. Not yet. Let's see. We have a greetings from Alexandria. All right. Bristow, okay. Mechanicsville, Virginia, right up the street. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Our Asala partners in Philly always join us. Richmond, Virginia, Roanoke, Arlington, Newport News. I'm so not as tech savvy as everybody else. I'm going to catch up okay. with you guys. I'm going to come okay. right back. It's okay. I can always do it if I need to. Him right though, Florida, Philly, Northern Virginia, Chesterfield. Okay, Temple, you're right up the street. Greensboro, North Carolina. I hear North Carolina got some snow. North yes, Virginia. Yes, it did. Yes. Let me get this PowerPoint up. We're going to get this done. Richmond, Virginia, historic Jackson Ward, right up the street. Share. And let me see. Can you see it now? There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. This is going to be a good presentation. I was hoping we could get, I could get, make this happen here. So is there. that viewable for everybody? You can see it. All right. How's everybody doing tonight? Thank you for the um, warm and 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 full biography there. I feel like I should say very little. Um, I thank you for your um, time tonight. Um, I know Dr. Mills gave you a lot of information, and we're just going to jump right in. Uh, it's the important the important part is to get the information out. So I know you're here. And you know enough about me. So let's talk about your health, because that's why we're here about health wealth. So tonight's presentation is gonna be pretty short. It's about um, how to disrupt chronic disease with vegetation and flavor and how to shop and prep and save money on a plant-based lifestyle. A lot of people don't share that information. Uh, they kind of tell you to go be vegan and they don't tell you how or the process. So here, we're gonna talk a little bit about health because I'm, I'm the educator. So I do also work with a lot of clinicians. So I'm always at the beginning talking about health. So let's talk about a couple of things here. Real quickly, we'll go over some um, some facts we probably didn't know about. We have the pandemic going on, of course, but we've had an epidemic of health crisis going on for decades, and it's um, exacerbated itself. Over the years, it gets more and more, our numbers keep getting higher and higher. Um, cardiovascular disease is our number one uh, uh, killer um, in the United States uh, with a death rate of near a million a year, three quarters of a million a year. Uh, dying from it, which means at the time that this presentation is over, this 60 minute session, we will have lost 70 to 75 Americans uh, due to heart disease, which is in most cases, unless it's congenital, which is what you're born with, if it's degenerative, it is reversible, mostly reversible and treatable and preventable on a plant-based lifestyle with other lifestyle factors, of course. Then we have cancer. Uh, cancer um, ends up a close second at 609,000 lives lost a year um, and at the time this presentation is over, we're gonna have lost a little over 60 people. So these are things I just like to bring into the um, viewpoint when we're doing a presentation, because I think it's not as clear. Our, we lose a lot of loved ones, but a lot of people are losing a lot of loved ones right now. So it's something we should be very conscious of. Um, we also have stroke, which is uh, one of the higher uh, chronic disease um, situations that we have going on in the United States. Our top five are diabetes, heart disease, cancer, uh, um, stroke and obesity is one of the leaders as well. So I have this little presentation, a little video here by Dr. Michael Greger. He is a friend of Dr. Mills and myself, and he has something called nutritionfacts.org. It's a two minute quick video, won't take long. And it will tell us about why moderation doesn't work. A lot of us are trying to, you know, moderate our way to health and it's not working for the, um, our GDP and it's not working for our, 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 um, Live, livelihood in our lives. So let me just pop this in, see if we can't watch this quick video. Or did I go to the next video? Let's see if I can't click. Clicking is important. Sorry guys, I'm gonna click it. 
okay, we're not gonna do that. So you'll have you'll have an opportunity. Let me try it one more time. See if that works. Okay. We cannot hear it though. Dawn, we can't hear the video. Oh, you can't hear it? Okay. I can, if you keep going, if you, I can, I can cue it up so we can play it if you keep going. Okay, what we'll do is, so there'll be in your, you'll be able to watch this video again. Please do, and I hope that you'll have a copy of this video. I have inserted some, um, some footage that will be helpful on your journey, um, just learning about moderation and some other things. So we won't play them because um, obviously there's a little challenge sound. So we're gonna go to the next slide. But um, the human cost of uh, moderation and some of the things we've done um, with the standard American diet has cost, it costs 1.7 million American lives a year. So that's something we should be mindful of. We're gonna get to the cheery stuff in a minute, but we have to get to the serious stuff as well. So as we move on, the next slide. We go to the healthcare costs. So um, just pushing through as healthcare costs $3.7 trillion a year in the United States. We are one of the highest uh, costing healthcare systems in the world. Um, but we have also, we don't have the best numbers as far as um, life and death and disability. Our numbers are poor. Um, and we, but we have the highest cost of healthcare. So the, the amount of GDP is 20, 5% of GDP that we spend on healthcare. So one of the things that we can do, some of the things that we can do to make an impact on that and those costs is to change some lifestyle behaviors. One of which is the way that we eat. It is one of the primary reasons that drives these costs and these deaths and these disabilities that happen in our country um, and all over the world. Um, and if you think it doesn't affect you financially because you're not sick or haven't had a loved one that has been sick, which is probably rare, uh, the public dollar chronic disease spend is 96 cents of every Medicare dollar spent is spent on chronic disease and 83 cents of every Medicaid dollar is spent on chronic disease. So that's $2 trillion or 75% of every public and private healthcare dollar that's spent on chronic disease. So you'll see there where the studies and information comes from, but that's just something I wanted to share with you just so we have some understanding of where we are on that. A lot of people ask, what's the difference between vegan and plant-based? So there's a big difference and, I, and I'm hoping I can clear this up for you tonight. Um, whole food plant-based is when you're in having a, a lifestyle that has minimally processed vegetables, low in calories, high in nutrients, nutrient dense, low caloric, a lot of vegetables, minimally processed, whole grains, legumes, nuts, beads, seeds, fruits, and veggies. That's what it is. Um, there's an avoidance at all, you know, of a lot of fast food, a lot of junk food, not a lot of those, you know, stopping at the McDonald's getting French fries, which aren't vegan anyway, talk about that later, um, or um, a lot of fried foods. We avoid that when you're whole food plant-based because oils are never good because they're degraded, they're just degraded plant foods. So you don't want anything that's highly processed. So you want to avoid that. So that's a whole food plant-based lifestyle. That's kind of the lifestyle that reduces your risk factors for chronic disease by up to 90%. Um, veganism which gets confusing is the exclusion of all forms of animal exploitation by definition. So we're talking about not wearing you know, leather from clothes that you buy or products that you buy that have uh, animal-based products in them, anything that's that way. Most people that are ethical vegans, which means for the animals, uh, they don't eat, they don't deal, they don't deal with that. They don't wear leather, they don't have leather in the cars, these kind of things. Um, I'm a little bit of both, but um, my focus here is to be plant-based. My focus with this group, because African-Americans, and we lead in the top chronic disease categories of all other groups. So I want to focus on the health, so on this presentation. But I wanted to share with you that under the veganism rainbow, where Washington Post did a recent article that talked about Black veganism in the United States, and that we are the leaders of Black veganism. We are the leaders of the, the rate of, of veganism in the United States. We're trending the highest. Out of 8% of African-Americans 
are trending by rate at 8%, whereas the rest of the country is trending at 3%. So because of our health and the changes that we've had in our lifestyles and in our families, we are looking very closely at veganism and we're changing the way veganism looks because we're talking about social justice and things that have to do with the humanity of people as well as animals. So um, that article should be insightful to everybody. So lifestyle benefits, the benefits of a plant-based lifestyle, uh, free, no cholesterol. You know, there's no animal that you're gonna eat that doesn't have cholesterol in it. None, no egg, no butt, nothing. No, no dairy, everything has cholesterol, squid, fish, uh, shrimp, high in cholesterol. Uh, rich in fiber and protein, animals don't provide protein for you. They only provide you uh, second party protein because they have to eat it the way that we eat it through the vegetable. We're eating the animal to get the vegetable, the animal eats the vegetable to get the protein. So we just need to eat the vegetable. Uh, and of course, if we just eat the vegetable, we're gonna get the fiber. When you eat an animal, uh, the fiber they keep while they're living. So they don't pass that on with, you know, when we eat them or cook them, they're not, there's no fiber present. So it's rich in vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, and they're complete uh, proteins in plants. That's, that's another conversation. But all the information you see here, it significantly aids in the prevention and management of reversal, reversal of diabetes, lowers your risk of death from heart disease, and has been proven to reverse it with the doctor that you see on the corner there. You can look at that video at another time. He is Dr. Baxter Montgomery. He is a renowned cardiologist out of Houston, Texas, and he has journaled and published in his reverse, diet, reverse heart disease in many, many lives. He has a, uh, a clinic called Montgomery Heart Center, and he's excellent. So take a look at that video. And just take a look at the rest of the things, losing weight, uh, protective against heart, um, Alzheimer's, lowers risk of a variety of cancers. These kind of things are things we need to know. So that's the benefits of a whole food plant-based lifestyle. So here's what it looks like. Um, here's a pyramid for you guys to look at at another time. Uh, there's six, I think there are 40,000 beans in the, in the world. So you're not gonna run out of a variety of beans. Uh, it's just kind of where you live, what beans will have access to. Then you have whole grains, which we want 100% whole grains, not something that says whole grain and then is has been heavily processed. You want 100% whole grains or sprouted grains. And then you have your fruits. And here's your, this is our version of a MyPlate, USDA MyPlate. This is the, the, the vegan health wealth period pyramid. So um, just take a look at that and keep that. Um, vegan brands. So I... Urban East does not recommend these highly processed vegan foods. Now, if you're transitioning to a plant-based lifestyle and you have to, you, you kind of want to try the Beyond Meat and the Impossible and all these different brands, try them. But this should not be a staple in an in a anchor of your vegan diet. It should not, of your, of your lifestyle, your whole food plant-based lifestyle. That's a, this is a more of a vegan, ethical vegan diet. Those who are doing it for the animals, they might eat a little more junky. And all this is highly processed heavily processed foods. And unless they have an ingredient list of five or six, which if you turn the back of the package over, they usually don't, you probably want to stay away from it um, as a staple in your diet. It's not going to, it's, it's significantly better than eating animal protein, or um, I promise you that, but it's just not something you want to do regularly because it's high in oil and those things, and they're broken down. The more it's broken down and processed, the more unhealthy it is for you or the less nutrient, nutrient rich it is. So that's what's most important, the nutrient rich, low caloric lifestyle. So here's, when I talk about calories and nutrients, here's a calorie density chart. It kind of shows you, uh, you know, what calorie rich foods are and nutrient dense foods are and the difference and how that works on the body. 400 calories of oil and how little that is and how empty your stomach still is versus the vegetables, 400 calories of vegetables, but you're full because it's fiber. So it fills you up and you can eat a lot of it. And, it's, and, it, and it fills you up all day and it gives you the vitamins, nutrients, minerals, and protein and everything that you need in nutrients. So um, you want to lean more toward a nutrient dense lifestyle versus a junky vegan lifestyle or a, uh, a lifestyle where you, you have a high calorie diet versus a nutrient dense, nutrient rich diet. So here's an example, one pound of vegetables is hundred calories, but one pound of ground beef is a thousand calories. So this just gives you perspective on what we're talking about. Um, now, pantry refresh. So this screen is available for you to kind of, and, it, and it's kind of a, a lot, 
But a lot of this you probably already have in your pantry already. Um, vinegars, it just gives you a little more variety. These are the things I have in my pantry. And uh, the condiments you already have, the only thing you're probably adding is tahini. My screen, I'm gonna move this a little bit around so I can see. Uh, you have tahini, tamari. Tamari is, uh, tahini is sesame paste. It's just ground up sesame seeds. Tamari is a lower soy sauce, so it, soy sauce with less sodium. And if you wanna even get less sodium than that, you wanna go with liquid aminos. They sell them in all the stores now and they give you the same um, Asian umami flavor that you would get from a soy sauce. So those are the things there and condiments that are different. Anything that stands out and jumps out, just ask me in the chat and we'll get your questions answered. But one of the things that jump out at me on spices is kalanamak and nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast makes everything when you, that you've had vegan that has mac and cheese or is kind of cheesy, taste cheesy. The kalanamak is an Indian black salt. It's highly sulfuric. Um, the thing that makes an egg eggy isn't the fact that it's an egg or the yolk or the whites, it's the sulfur in the shell. So that's when you crack it open and that smell hits you, that sulfur. So the, sul the um, kalanamak is a highly sulfuric salt. So it gives off an eggy flavor when you sprinkle it on your tofu, you sprinkle it on whatever, you replace the salt and you use that instead. You can get that online at Amazon or at any Indian or Asian store, you'll find kalanamak. Um, dulce granules is, gives you a fishy taste. Dulce flakes, sea kelp, those kind of things. Things taste fishy. So if you want something to replace, you put some chickpeas, you want a tuna salad, put some um, dulce granules on there, it's gonna taste fishy. So it's just a sea vegetable. That's what the fish eat to make them, that's the fishy flavor that you're getting. It's not that they're fishy, they have no flavor, but what they've eaten has flavor, right? So it gives you kind of a sense of the ocean, the sea kelp. Um, anyway, garam masala, all those spices, um, they're just a variety of things that you can get into as you, uh, look at your pantry refresh. Just kind of look at that list and see what you don't have and pull out the things that are not there. Kind of replace them. You don't have to do it all at one time, but please do consider replacing these items with these because these are the things that are gonna sustain you. Um, they're gonna be cheaper for you and everything else. Uh, fruits, veggies, everything's there, but make sure when you get your whole grains, I'm gonna caution you again. Some boxes say whole wheat pasta or, or whole grain. Some bread say that, but you're gonna have to flip that bread over and see if it's, it should say 100% or it should say sprouted grain or 100% whole grain. It's marketing, don't just buy it because it says grain. Because if it's, if it's not whole, it's not 100% whole grain, so they have um, removed uh, the fiber. They've stripped it of its fiber and it's still brown. So it's not gonna give you the nutrient um, rich density and fiber that you thought you'd get. It just because, you know, because that's the benefit of eating a whole grain, isn't it? The fiber. So in the protein. So on the next screen, the shopping tips. So it looks like that one's caught up in where I can't see it, but I can tell you, I'm just going to bring all these in and move this over. And I'm sure you can see it a little better than I can. Buy whole foods. So we were just talking about uh, buying the process, the faux meats. If you're starting into your vegan journey and those faux meats are something you're interested in, you're not going to lose weight really quickly because they're oily and they're fatty. So just keep that in mind. And they're not cheap. They're not cheap. So if you're trying to save money on this vegan lifestyle, which you can up to $5,000 a year, you, you might not want to, you might consider not purchasing a lot of those faux meat products. They might be easy and convenient, but convenience costs more money. So just keep that in mind as you, you're you on your uh, vegan uh, journey, you know, kind of, or plant-based journey, what you're doing. Um, buy in bulk. Buying in bulk saves you money. Uh, an example is um, 42 ounce container of oats is, is significantly cheaper and lasts longer than a small container, right? Then you're gonna use that for a longer time. You can get bulk beans for 69 cents to $2 a pound versus um, buying beans in a can already done. You don't need to get the keep beans in a can, get an Instapot and you won't need to worry about it because Instapot's gonna cook your beans in 20 minutes. You don't have to worry about taking all day. It's not like a crock pot. So I think, um, what about organic? Um, some of your fruits need to be organic, uh, but ones that have hard shells and on hard shells, uh, meaning a banana, a melon, um, anything per, that permeates like a citrus, you, Anything that's citrus or anything that has an, or soft skin, 
you want to get that organic um, and avoid the pesticides as much as you can. But I did include a list, ewg.org is an environmental watchdog and they have identified 15 of the minimum, the, the non-organic uh, vegetables that have been received minimal pesticide um, exposure. So if you'd like to try to still save money, go ahead and do it that way. But all these, um, I have no affiliation with them. All these had, I think their entire produce section is, is organic. So, and it's, and it's a very reasonably priced store. So go ahead, if you're trying to save money, you can go there. Walmart also has organic items. And um, you can find some of the faux meats that I don't want you to eat, but I'm gonna give you some advice anyway. You can find those at Walmart much cheaper than you would find them at, at, at a, a more um, popular franchise, a larger big box um, that's more popular and costly. I won't say who they are, but um, shopping the perimeter of the store. Don't go hungry and, and shop the perimeter. When you're shopping, produce is on the outside, everything on the perimeter, is where you want to where you want to hang your main shopping hat. So go ahead and do that, and you'll save a lot of money, and you'll uh, focus not in the center of the store where all the pro the highly more the highly processed things are in the center of the store. And of course, stay away from the meats and the fish. Stay away from all that. Um, uh, unbag and prep. When you get home, it's very important that you go ahead and unbag it. I know I know it's it's a chore, but unbag it when you get to the house. Unbag it paper towel, blot it, chop it, paper towel around it, and then in a Ziploc gives it a little more time to live because it can sweat in a Ziploc bag, your product. Let's say if you're cutting up collars, go ahead and clean them, rinse them, put them in, in the Ziploc bag, or don't even clean them right away. Just put, cut them up, put them in a Ziploc bag. When you're ready to use them, go ahead and clean them. But I would just do it all at one time. From collards, your green beans, anything, your romaine, anything you're gonna chop up, your parsley, you can leave that in a jar and put it is it like flowers and put that in a jar of water and it'll it'll stay alive for about a week and a half, almost two weeks. Parsley and cilantro, things like that. But you have to put them in water like flowers. Um, then of course, um, unbagging and prepping saves you time. Time is money. So go ahead and do that and make sure uh, uh, you get an increased life on your vegetables that way. They won't go bad as fast. Go to the store with a plan. If you go to the store with a plan and not hungry, you're gonna have a better shopping experience, but no matter what kind of eater you are. But that's one of the very important things you have to do to, to make sure that you're shopping smart and you don't waste vegetables and they don't go bad, right? Because you have a plan, you have meals planned out. I have some websites for you in a second so you'll know what you can cook. Um, but invest in Instapot. Again, no affiliation with any of these things. Instapot I don't have, but I have an Instapot. I was against it for a long time. I like my pot and pan. I like my knife. I like certain things that are very traditional. But this Instapot, I did some cabbage in four minutes in an Instapot, and it and it came out perfectly. It, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it, it was the way I like. It was a Southern style cabbage, and it came out just right. Now I still roast a lot of my vegetables, but if you're looking for something like your beans that usually take two three hours and you have to soak them, you can do no soak beans for four, in 35 minutes in the Instapot. So it's a bit of a, it's a little investment, but it is going to pay itself over time and time again. And it'll save you money because you're buying bulk beans. So what else? Um, cook ahead. Um, cook ahead. Make sure you have the right containers for your cooking ahead process. Make sure you have the kind of containers that help you um, to uh, put your things in a prepping for, to go to, for you to leave you know, the two compartment or three compartment um, container, you can get those containers very easily now at some of the stores like Big Lots or some of the more reasonably priced stores or even at Walmart, almost every store has these now. But online, there's a store called Websterrant Store. If you wanna buy in bulk and get them for the year, you can get them significantly cheaper than buying them by the 12 or the 15, Websterrant Store. That particular site and some other sites, you can buy them in bulk and that'll save you money. You can get your two or three compartment containers. I use the 16 ounce deli um, containers with the, with the lid for um, reusable containers for, uh, for my soups and stews. And then you can use the other for that. I use curry. So there's just so many options. Make sure you have the right containers because when you cook all that food, you're gonna need to put it in the right containers and it should be stackable so that you can put them in the freezer, which lasts about three months for most of the things in the refrigerator for about a week. Um, and again, big picture savings. You save um, 33,000 gallons of water, 913 square feet of forest, and 30 um, 
animal lives, 620 uh, pounds of carbon dioxide, uh, just you as a 30 day vegan, not anybody else. So that's how much impact you could have. Um, 1,000 um, 1, gallons of water is what it takes to make uh, one gallon of milk. One acre, 1.5 acres of land um, can produce uh, either 375 pounds of meat or 37,000 pounds of plant-based food. So it's, these are the things that matter because we've got to make sure we're looking at our, our why, which should be our children and our legacy as well. Even if it's not us, look ahead at our grandchildren and our children. So it's 40% cheaper to, um, than a fish dish to be vegan or meat. And it's 32% quicker, 25 minutes. So here's some studies that I want you guys to click on um, as you go forward. Go ahead and click on these studies. You'll see all these studies have a link. Um, there are 6,000 studies that, that you know, substantiate all that I'm telling you about a plant-based lifestyle and the benefits of it. Uh, and here are the studies right there. And you can just click on them. All these studies, like for instance, the EPIC study, the European Prospective Study, 40, 477,000 person study over 10 years. So these are not studies that were fly by night. These were really peer reviewed clinical studies. Um, some double blind, you know, they were the top, uh, top shelf studies. So those are gonna be good for you. So when we talk about what are we gonna eat? This, easy recipes. You're, you're, it's hard to find recipes. I've listed the books that I would recommend. Um, you start with all these books have easy recipes, very flavorful recipes. All these website links that I have, these are all live website links. You can go to any of these and get a ton of recipes. Play around, have fun. You'll have a great time with it, it's great. Um, and again, all these books, I've used them all. I know all of the authors with the exception of the Buddha Chef and I've, I've enjoyed their food. Food is great. Sweet Potato Soul, um, Avant-Garde Vegan, Afro Vegan out in San Francisco delicious and at urban eats i did that one so we know that one flavor my plate but buddha chef has great recipes too it's just just explore and and all these websites click on it you'll find recipe after recipe after recipe and they're not complicated i did not give you any any links that had complicated recipes so here's an easy prep um these videos we were going to play them but we won't these are a couple of recipes that you can see uh there's the cabbage being cooked in a quick recipe and then there's the tofu scramble, which is very high in nutrients, vitamins, and fiber. And tofu is very high in protein. So 30 grams for a cup. And then you get 16 grams of fiber. So it's a winner. So all these things are there. We're going to have to skip that. So must read. I've given you a list of books to read if you're interested in learning more about your why. Because without your why, it's going to be hard to sustain a vegan lifestyle. So. Uh, here are your books that are going to help you along your journey. And here are the must-watch documentaries. There are a few of them. There's so many, but these are the ones I'd recommend. Um, game changers for um, if you're going to share it with a, uh, you have athletic children or, or with your husband or someone that's very into fitness, that they're going to really appreciate this one, the game changers. Forks Over Knives is for the person who reads a lot of books anyway and, and likes to ponder the academic academics and, you know, the studies. They like to ponder the studies. It's a little slower but it's very very informative and it's very very on point it's wonderful but you have to be ready for it um what the health is more of your laid back uh um uh, it's, it's a different kind of film but it gives you the information you need but it doesn't tell you where to go next uh these other books up here on the must reads will tell you what to do next as well as um, my cookbook also has some what to do next things in it um but these are very important to have. You know, everybody, you know somebody that has a reversing heart disease would be important. Reversing diabetes would be important. Dr. Ornish actually helped Bill Clinton reverse his, President Clinton, reverse his former President Clinton to reverse his uh, heart disease. Um, I don't know if he's still working with him, but he has some studies. All these doctors have studies and are published. Every doctor that I have here and Tracy McWhorter is wonderful. Um, you just have to read it for yourself. And sustainability tips. Last thing, um, download Daily Dozen. Daily Dozen is an app that can help you um, on the first 30 days of your journey. It can help you a lot. It's going to tell you what things you should eat and what amounts, that what dozen things you should eat a day for a balanced plant-based lifestyle. 
And then of course, PCRM.org is Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. They give you a 30 day uh, transition plan to the plant-based lifestyle, very, very specific. And Dr. Milton Mills, you saw him last month. He's very helpful. And nutritionfacts.org gives you two minute video links and information, but you can type anything in the search engine on food or health and he'll have something for you. And it'll be something that is evidence-based and clinical. He is a medical doctor. All these doctors I'm referring to are medical doctors. Um, find a local plant-based group, um, not an, or a vegan group or a potluck. Um, they'll kind of help you try to find long-time vegans. Ones don't try to try to look for long-term vegans in there that you don't see eating a whole bunch of junk food. Try to start off with some people that are a little bit healthy. But if you want to start off junky, I just want you to get started. But don't stay junky. Um, select a board certified, um, doctor. If you can, there's a website called plantbaseddoctors.org. Finds you any plant-based, any, they're board certified doctors, but they are also practicing a plant-based lifestyle. So you can find them anywhere by going to that website, um, anywhere in the world, actually, not only the country, um, secure a coach that can guide you through your transition. I do coaching, but I know a lot of other people that do coaching depends on your coaching style. Coaching helps you get through those first 21 days that are a little bit rough. Because the smells of food that you used to like when you're at someone's house or watching them eat the chicken, you're probably thinking, oh, I didn't eat before I came here. Oh, I'm so hungry. Let me have a little nibble. Next thing you know, you're feeling defeated, but you shouldn't. Everyone, it's okay. Um, but a coach will help you guide you through that. So sometimes you might need coaching. And if it's in your um, budget to do so, get a coach. Um, inspect what you expect. Don't assume that all vegans are clinical, are clinicians, um, all vegans or or clinicians are well-versed about nutrition. Everyone you know did not read the number of, same number of books. Everyone you know, all the vegans aren't, uh, some of them eat milkshakes and, and, and eat French fries and, and double, triple Beyond Burgers. And some of them eat really healthy. So just kind of be mindful of that. Just the way you'd be prudent and mindful about other things. And only 27% of medical schools in the United States offer a single course in nutrition. So it's going to be pretty difficult for them to give you nutritive feedback when only 27% of them had a single course of nutrition. And that was on the Krebs cycle, which has nothing to do with nutrition. That has to do with how food is biochemically broken down in the body. So 73% of medical schools have no courses in nutrition at all in the United States. So something to keep in mind, um, doctors are altruistic and great and wonderful, but they also struggle with the same chronic diseases you do. So it's on, on you to find out what works best for radicalizing your wellness. It's gonna be on you. Um, and I have this last slide that talked about, and I, let me see if I'm just down. This is Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. He's one of the renowned cardiologists in the country. Some people think a plant-based whole foods diet is extreme. More, half, more than half a million people a year will have their chest opened up and vein taken from their leg and sewn into their coronary artery. Some people will call that extreme. So that is a quote from Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. He is the author of uh, How to Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. And he is a renowned physician from the Cleveland Clinic. And he is well-known and uh, well-journaled. So there you go. Let's radicalize wellness together. I don't know if I gave you enough information about how to prep and shot, but I'm happy to answer those questions now. Listen, Sister Dawn, when you yes. said the doctors struggle with the same chronic diseases, I'm I'm sold. I'm I'm sold. I'm, I'm about to. I was texting Michelle. I need to go get my containers. I need to clean up the refrigerator. I need to reset it. My son mm -hmm. is twelve and started his vegetarian journey when wow. he was about nine and a half. And so you have just crushed through all of the things we're feeding him, but that's okay. It's okay. Oh we're no, cooking. let's let him be okay. Let's let him keep doing what he needs to do it. Listen. Once you start cooking, he's gonna change. <laughs> I mean, right. And and so we we yes. certainly thank you. We have a couple of a couple of questions. So I think you may have answered this one, but you can give us some additional information. Do you freeze anything which you talked about or just eat what you um have each week? Like so I freeze you everything. I okay. freeze everything. So okay. what I do is I make things in bulk. Um, as a person who used to do a lot of meal prep and catering for hundreds of people, the best way to do it, and this is, and I say these same practices at home, make your pounds of beans, get your 32 ounce containers or 16 ounce containers, put the lid on them, they freeze for three months. 
They're mm. not going to go bad. Leave a little bit of room at the top because they will swell because ice, you know, liquid rises. But leave that little bit of room and you're going to just pull those out when you need them the next time. You have three months. I had put collard greens, you name it, regular spinach, everything. Well, the spinach is a little softer, but you know, your hearty turnips, your collards, your mustards, your, your chards, um, your, uh, most of your leafy, heavy leafy greens and all of your beans and your peas, they'll be fine. Um, your cauliflower, your cruciferous cauliflower works pretty well, your cabbage, uh, but yeah, you can freeze almost anything. The same thing you find in the freezer section at the store, you can do it at home. Wow, I hope that answers Carlina's question. Yep. So Sheila asks, is Greek yogurt considered dairy and is salmon still okay to eat? So, so the answer is there is vegan Greek yogurt. Okay. So um, there's a, uh, there are three or four brands. One that comes to mind right away is Forager. They're a very good brand and they are available widely um, in, in Publix, uh, depend, in, in Virginia Publix. Then there's, um, of course, the Whole Foods and the, the Whole Foods has and the Trader Joe's does not have it, but they have cream cheese that's vegan. Um, but salmon. So I should have Dr. Mills on here for this one because he's going to go on, he would go on the attack. But uh, so the only thing that about fish is that the ocean is, um, is it's fish, there, there is no healthy version of salmon. It is a fatty fish. Um, squid is fatty. Um, not only are they fatty, they're, they, I don't know, there's no, there's no nutritive benefit that you can't get from plants. And they're to, there's a lot of toxicity that they have ingested. And the oceans are very toxic. Um, there's a lot of dumping. There's no filter. There's no flusher. There's no filter. It's just the ocean. And there's a lot of garbage in there. And there's no way to clear it out, out of the bottom. There's no, there's no, nothing to pull, nothing to do this, just wouldn't eat it. And there's no nutritional value to it. And, it, and it's not, and it's, and Dr. Mills would tell you that their health, that there's detrimental things to your health um, about salmon and other fish. Um, some are more cholesterol laden than others, but just avoid fish because you can, what do you need? You need hearts of palm. Hearts of palm tastes like fish. If you like crab cakes, I can, in my cookbook, and in a lot of the cookbooks I showed you, you can replace those fishy items with the dulce granules or the sea kelp. There's certain things that can make your food taste fishy. And of course, you don't want to make everything a meat imitation, but you don't need the salmon. But if you're transitioning and you'd like to keep it, figure out a way to transition out of it. You'll, you won't miss it once you make your, a proper transition. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm writing so much. I need to get another piece of paper over here. Um, so Ms. Freeman Nichols asks, I have been told that women should avoid a lot of soy. Can you speak on that? I'm so glad she asked. Who, who said that? Who is the person? That's Tamara Freeman Nichols. That's an excellent Tam question. Tamara, mm -hmm. you, you get the bell ringer winner. I'm going to give you a cookbook. Okay, Michelle, get her, um, get her uh, number, name. She's going to get a free Urbanese cookbook. You know why? Because that's the question that Everybody would have wanted to ask after this show and wouldn't have asked. This is the most misunderstood thing about soy. Soy is protective against cancer. I'm going to say that again. Soy is protective against cancer. And this is why there are two hormones. There are two cells. There's an A receptor and a B receptor cell. And the, the, it's a phytoestrogen. Estrogen turns cancer gene, you know, turns on cancer growth, uh, abnormal cell growth, which is, cancer growth. But that, but the phytoestrogen in tofu goes to the, go to the B receptor, which is the protective against cancer receptor. The dairy and milk one you eat, and it's in the meat, that goes to the A receptor, which turns cancer gene growth on. Mm -hmm. This one over here, the, there's an A receptor and a B receptor. If you go to nutritionfacts.org and put in the word cancer and put in tofu and put, you'll see it is protective against cancer. Soy is protective against cancer. It does not cause man boobs. It does not do, sorry for the word. It does not cause cancer. It does not cause, it is protective against cancer and heart disease. And it's very, very healthy. So it's easy. I mean, they don't have a big lobby like milk and dairy. You know, there's no tofu lobby in the Congress, you know, running around Washington. So it's kind of hard to beat the dairy lobby, but that is a total miss, myth. And I'm so glad you asked that question, Tamara. You get a book. 
Wow, that's that's amazing because we, we hear so much information and I've right. often heard exactly what um, Tamara said. So here's another question. What do you recommend for someone who is starting plant-based and they are not eating enough calories eating plant-based and trying to exercise two or three and do two or three miles a day? How many calories? Okay. So it's more, it's not really about the calories it's, it's as much about making sure that you get the right balance on your plate. You can't eat like broccoli and then brown rice. You have to eat, you have to make sure you're getting a proper balance of the plate. And that's where Dr. Um, Gregor's uh, information will be helpful to you. Um, he has uh, some information on a daily dozen that helps you get through a proper balance. It, it's your pro, so you're concerned about protein. It always gets back to protein. So in other words, you know, you need this protein because you need the energy to get through the day, right? You need B12 and that you need even when you're a meat eater. That's nobody talks about that. But mm -hmm. you need your B12 supplement if you're vegan, but you just need a balanced plate. Um, I think it's a brown, Faro has twice the amount of protein as brown rice, which I think is 20 grams for a cup. So on average, you need 50 to 75 grams of protein a day, depending on your weight. And there's a calculating chart and I'll get it before this show is over. I'll get, I'll go get what that is and tell you the actual calculation. I just don't have it in my head. Um, you just do that time is 0.36 times your weight. I think that's what it is. And that's how many grams of protein you need a day to sustain and be vibrant. You just need to make sure you're getting a balance of things on the plate. You need, just like you had when you ate meat, when you eat meat, you're going to need your protein and fiber. And you're going to need your, your, your grain that is going to fill your stomach up. You want to fill up the stomach, but you want to fill it up. Fruit and vegetables is the best way to do it. But fruit isn't high in protein. Okay. So don't go get a smoothie and go to the gym. That's like the worst. That's a, that's the thing you do after the gym. What you want to do when you go to the gym, get yours, you know, eat something that's, you know, about 45 minutes prior to the gym, that's going to give you that boost, you know, your, your brown rice, your tofu, your mushrooms. Um, your greens, your grains, something grainy that's going to fill up your stomach and give you that boost. But not, and it's got to be 100% whole grains. And then eat a sweet potato. That's not going to make you gain any weight. Don't eat the white potato, don't leave the white potatoes for somebody else. Just mm -hmm. eat the sweet potato. Potato salad for the cookout. You can have the sweet potato, you can have the regular potatoes. But don't do that. No, it's a mm. sweet potato, um, Japanese sweet potato, American sweet potato, yams. This, These are power foods. And then throw some broccoli on it. And then you can put some um, chili, a little bit of vegan chili on there. You will be full for all day and you will have the protein and the energy balance you need. A lot of people on the vegan will eat like one thing. Oh, I'm going to eat this brown rice. They try to be too frugal on their plate. You can eat a lot of food and not have a lot of calories. It's not the calories you want. It's the protein and fiber and the balance. So here's a question. What if you don't like beans? What's the substitute for beans that can be just as hearty? Oh, if you don't like beans. Oh my gosh, there's so many. So beans, just as hearty. So mushrooms are very, um, you can make, there's so many dishes you can make with mushrooms. They have like that umami, that little um, meaty flavor. And you can use like a liquid Worcestershire sauce that is vegan. There's a vegan Worcestershire sauce, by the way, because Worcestershire sauce is not vegan. It has fish sauce and oyster sauce in it. So get the one that says Annie's or the other brand because the fish sauce and the stuff in there, you don't want that. Yeah, they use that to make Worcestershire sauce. Um, there are just so many things. Um, potatoes are very substantial. Um, tubers, you know, but you want to stay with you want to stay with the sweet potatoes, that kind of thing. They're, they're just 80,000 beans. I mean, chickpeas, have you tried all the beans? Who is this? Who is that person talking? That's Michelle, your your Trojan friend. That's who that Michelle. is. Michelle, don't talk to me. Michelle, don't talk to me, ma'am. Michelle, we're going to talk after the show. Michelle, there are 80,000 beans. I know for sure you haven't tried all of them. What about peas? Chickpeas? Um, there, there's, there's so many varieties of things that you can put together. No, we can get creative, Michelle. There's farro and you can add sun-dried tomatoes to it. You can put a little groundless crumbles, some vital wheat gluten. There are a lot of things you can literally do that don't involve beans. But beans are just one of those quick things you can get a power punch of, of fiber and protein from. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. What would you recommend to someone who has allergies, like say a nut allergy? A lot of things are based mm -hmm. on us. What would you recommend they do if there's an allergy concern? So if you have a nut allergy, um, you just go with seeds. 
So that's very easy. So if you like the vegan cheese, um, I had some clients that um, had nut allergies. So I, I use pepita seeds, sun, raw pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds. There's so many seeds that you can use to make the vegan cheese. If you're trying to make your vegan nacho dip, I make chili con queso that's vegan, all this stuff, because clients like to, you know, they still want their nacho fun. Of course, I would still want it. I still eat it. But you can do that by just replacing it with some of the seeds. Once you soak them, you can process them the same way you would process a nut. And it will give you the same mouthfeel. And it'll still work well in your recipe if you're replacing to try to make, again, a cheese sauce. Other than that, um, I mean, there's pepita seed. There are quite a few seeds. And then, of course, there's flax seeds and other things. But you want to have those ground. But as far as the nuts, the only thing I think of right away are... Um, in the seed family are the sun, sunflower seeds and the pepitas, the, the pumpkin seeds. Okay. So to that, somebody's saying, what, what type of nuts can you eat on a plant-based diet? Every one of them. But yeah. I wouldn't eat them as so, but just every one of them. The best pound for pound one, the one that's best pound for pound as far as fiber um, and to all the nutrient balance is walnut. The walnut is like the magic nut, the walnut. And, and you would think it would be, and another good one is the raw Brazil nut. The raw, the raw Brazil nut is high in selenium, which is helpful as you eat three of days, eat, eat three of them a week. Dr. Milton Mills told me this. Three of these a week, they're high in selenium, help to be protective against COVID. Doesn't mean you're not going to get it, but it helps blunt the effects. So the, they're just high in selenium. They're high in nu uh, nutrition, but the pound for pound, the best one is the walnut. You just want to, if you're trying to lose weight though, you don't want to like have three cups of walnuts because they have oil. They have a natural oil content. So, so you don't want it. It was something to my grandma's nut dish that she had on the, on the table. It was grandma knew something. Didn't she know it in her pecans with the, with the nutcracker? Right. We had walnuts. Walnuts and pecans. Right. And so she had oranges in it too. So with that, someone, you know, and this may be another myth because this is what we hear all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Is too much fruit like bananas a trigger for diabetes? No, it is not. What's a trigger for diabetes is you're going to get having more of a, so dot, I recommend for that one. And I recommend nutritionfacts.org, put in diabetes and put fruit, or you can go to um, Dr. Neil Barnard's book, how to, the program for reversing diabetes. Um, that whole book is about debunking some of those. He is um, the, the lead physician at um, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And he's a very, he's published author, genius, great. Um, and no, it doesn't trigger too much fruit. See, too much is a very, let me just back up, Cassandra. Too much is a big word. I don't know what that means. Everybody's subjective there. But right. when you're eating, Normally what happens is not the fruit, it's what you put with the fruit, the whipped cream. Mm. And then you put the little cake on the bottom and the syrup. Don't that's, do that. that's what's messing it up. I'm done with strawberry shortcake. I mess y'all up. Okay, listen. But that's what that's what messes up the fruit. It's the accoutrements to the fruit, right? It's not the fruit. An apple by itself. And then if you juice an apple, and then you're taking all the pulp. I mean... It, when you have the sucrose and the, you leave it complete with the sucrose and the fruit crust intact, that's not going to spike anything. That's a slow mover towards your insulin resist uh, your insulin. But if you separate the fruit crust from the sucrose and you're eating jelly, you know this is it, it used to be fruit. And if you're eating grape, grapes are, grapes are very sugary. But you know you stick with your melons and your and your oranges and don't juice everything. Eat macerate it. Eat it. Eat it. It's not that bad. Check out that book though, Dr. Neil Barnard. So we're, we're going to wrap up just, just a couple of things. One, clarify what spices that you indicated would give us the fishy taste. You named- Dulce you granules. Dulce, Dulce, Dulce is D-U-L-S-E granules. D-U-L-S-E. D-U-L-S-E. Dulce or Dulce granules. I pick them up. You can get them out online. I get them sometimes on Amazon, but you can get them at Whole Foods or those stores, even Publix. I've seen them in the, um, where the Asian stuff is hanging right in that little section, international section, you'll see a little canister of Dulce granules. You can also use seaweed and stuff like that. But to me, it's too, seaweed is very overpowering. Dulce granules kind of mellow, but it gives you that fishy taste. Okay. 
And does the body, we want to give you a, a few, uh, a minute or two to talk about your book too, but this question um, from Ms. Parks, does the body easily adapt to the increase in fiber when you begin a plant-based diet, especially for those who may have di digestive issues? It's a good, very good question. So mm -hmm. your body, um, so from a gas, let's, let's talk about couple of those things. There are a couple of things. When she said that right away, I thought about gas, right? Being, you know, the gassiness. So when you're eating a lot of beans, you're, for a it takes about a week and a half to kind of work through. Beans are rough now. Now you can soak them. That takes away some of it. That's why you don't need to get them in a can. Soak them. And that's going to pull out some of that, that part that's going to make you gassy. But after about a week and a half, your, your body will have adjusted. Um, if you have digestive issues, it's not because of plants. It's because of stuff, the other things you're eating. Digestive issue, let's, talk, let's unwrap that a little bit more. Um, feel free to send some notes to Michelle or any of the crew here, and I'll make sure I get that to Dr. Mills or myself to answer those questions. But um, no, it's, there is an adjustment period um, when it comes to the beans. But again, your body, it's a good adjustment. It's a good adjustment. It's a, an adjustment toward promoting, lower, lowering your risk factors for your top chronic diseases and increasing um, you know, good gut biome food. Your food is information. Just like if you put in your car, you put bad gas in your car and you have it right. you're driving a Range Rover and, and you put Yugo gas, you put the, the 87, but then you want 93 performance. Right. Nope. Can't get it. Won't work. Doesn't work. It's just information. Your your body uses that food as fuel and it's information. It's just information. Diets are, you know, DNA is one thing that loads the gun, but your diet and lifestyle decisions pull the trigger. Also, in this last minute, you have to also exercise 30 minutes a day, moderate exercise. You don't have to go tear the gym down if you don't want to. If you're a superwoman, you go on, do it, Superman. But 30 minutes brisk walking a day. Then your life and your lifestyle change. That's going to increase you, increase you even more. And then you, you don't want to be smoking, no smoking. And you want to, you know, reduce your alcohol, right? You don't want it to be, you know, you know, moderate, you know, social, but not, you know, that's it. And in those kind of lifestyles, there's seven lifestyle factors, but the ones that have a lot of impact, daily exercise, just walk 30 minutes a day. You don't, you can do it in your house. You don't have to go out. You don't have to go to the gym, but if you want to go to the gym, do that, but walk at a brisk pace, you know, you don't have to run, but walk at a moderate pace and then change your lifestyle just to change your life. Wow. I'm just I, 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 this is so it's so much is so rich. Michelle has put um, some information about your book. There was a question in the chat. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be is is chai putting chai. good to eat or, or are they say in chia. I'm not sure. So um, chia seeds. Um, so if it's chia, chia seeds, um, flax seeds, um, uh, hemp seeds, all those are very good to eat. Those are very good. They're high in fiber and nutrients and phytonutrients and vitamins and minerals. If we want to come back on and bring me on later, bring me on for the nutrients and stuff, but, or just Q and A about food, but that's why I'm the educator. I know all about the food. Right. Exactly. And you have given us a lot of information. I'm going to kick it over to Gwen. We're going to launch just a poll to see where everyone is with this. What an awesome session. I wanted to go on and on. But right. now we're going to have, it's ending our session. We're going to do a short poll. This should pop up on our screens momentarily. Oh, there it is. So a lot of people are currently exploring a plant-based lifestyle. That's wonderful. So Dawn, we, we cannot thank you enough. Any information that gives us a better quality of life, extends our life. Then you told us it saves money. You told us it saves time. 
I mean, what? why wouldn't we do this, right? Like you gave us a million reasons why we should really, and, and really gave us a blueprint for how to do this. So we are very, very thankful for you spending this time with us. Thank you all who have joined us. We hope that you'll follow us on Facebook to see our other events. We are so thankful to AARP Virginia for this wonderful, wonderful partnership. We'll be continuing our monthly Cultivate series and we'll have Michael Carter coming up with Carter Farms and he will be breaking down Africulture. We also will be continuing our genealogy discovery and we will um, with Shelly Murphy that we're kicking that off this week. And then for Black History Month, we're going to have Wind Down Wednesdays with Brian Bullock. So you can join us on Tuesdays, Wednesdays or Sundays. Lots of information out there to empower us all. I have tremendously enjoyed you, Dawn, I have a thousand questions. I'm tearing up your website right now. I need <laughs> a client. I need to get this cookbook. Like I need to do all this and I need to have it done tomorrow. So we will be in touch again. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you always, AARP, Miss Janaea, Miss Gwen, and Miss Pat. And to all of you, good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.